Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Off-Grid Knives Viper V2. We reviewed the uh, Viper uh, quite a ways back. Um, I've been a fan of off-grid knives for a long time, um, mainly because they managed to mix in that sort of tactical aesthetic with an actual functional <laughs> design that's got good fit and finish um, and uh, good materials, all of that, good ease of manipulation. They've always managed to put those two things together, which is not usually the case. Usually when you get something that's, you know, like got that kind of tactical element, it's it's not, it's just kind of too much tactical and not enough function, but these these knives tend to balance that very, very well. I'm really excited to share with you guys that this version is actually made in Taiwan, not China. It also is sporting a 154cm blade um, and comes in at a very, very fair price considering what you are getting here. I will make sure that this is linked right down below so you guys can check it out if you want. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to Off Grid Knives for sending this in. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this knife. Overall length of the Viper V2 coming in at eight and a quarter inches, definitely what I would call a full-size knife. Blade length is a surprising, boy, almost 3.75. I'm gonna call that a solid 3.65 at its shortest, uh, shortest length up at that peak. It is all of the cutting edge is more. It's like 3.55 inches of cutting edge. Really nice ratios here. Uh, nice size, absolutely. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. Just a few up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So you can see here that this is, you know, closing in on the same size as the Rat 1. How about up against the Demco AD 20.5? There we go. How about up against the Benchmade Bugout? Alrighty. And finally, the Spyderco Para 3. So how is the action on this guy? Off-grid knives have always been good. They've used a wide variety of different OEMs, um, many of which have been, you know, out of China. These guys are Taiwan. And as you can see, the uh, the action is extremely, extremely smooth right out of the box. The detent also feels very crisp. Everything feels great. It is, there's, a, there's an area here where it feels close to double clutch, but as you can see, I'm getting it to drop down to my thumb and the detent ball is well up on the face of the blade. Really nice. That flipper tab really is designed well. You get lots of leverage. You get a full, powerful flip, and you can even push button it if you want to. I'm very happy with the action, and there is plenty of access to that liner lock that's been properly scalloped, so we're good to go there. Um, let's go ahead and do carry profile. Thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. It's a little thicker. We have lipped liners in the G10 on top, but it's not crazy thick. Uh, length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Where are you? There you are. Um, this guy is definitely larger than the Para 3, uh, approaching the same overall length as the PM2, and it is also fairly tall. It's got a, quite a big flipper tab, but nothing that you'll be overly bothered by if you've been used to carrying the PM2, aside from maybe the weight, which we'll talk about here. In fact, let's go ahead and talk about it right now. For materials, like I said, we are using um, 154CM, which is one of my favorite all-around user steels of all time. Uh, and then we have a continuous diamond-textured G10. Uh, for the scales on both sides, uh, nicely chamfered at the edges. And then we have full steel liners with just a little tiny bit of milling on the inside. Let's go ahead and weigh it. I'm going to guess this thing weighs 4.75 ounces. Nope. How about five point, almost 5.75 ounces? This is a pretty heavy knife, which is surprising. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's almost six ounces, but you know, I, I guess it is. Balance, I'm going to guess is, yeah, it's a little bit butt heavy, but not crazy. I mean, we're somewhat close to the pivot. I think you, you might notice that it's a little bit more hefty. Um, especially if you've been carrying a knife like the PM2, which is quite a bit lighter. Um, but it also has that feeling of solidity, which is not anything that you can, measure and you know with with durability not in this not generally right it's not like you're getting extra durability from it but if you like a knife that feels solid boy does this feel solid that's generally the case with a lot of off-grid knives let's go ahead and do a hardware check i'll get out my tools as per usual my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable you can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools i use on this channel 
We got a T8 here for the pivot. Certainly, I haven't actually checked it yet. <laughs> checked it. Checked it. And T8 for the um, body screws, which is excellent. We have three T6 screws holding in the pocket clip, which is fine, no big deal. A couple of T6 screws holding in the filler tab on the other side. Lefties, I know, rejoice. Um, but yeah, just a couple of body screws. Honestly, very simple construction, very easy to take apart, and it's T8 across the board, which is great. That's the way, that's that's how it should be. Awesome, awesome stuff. How about um, the uh, blade stock thickness? So, blade stock thickness, zero out, there we go. <laughs> Bless it! Come on! It's like, no! No! <laughs> Okay, blade sock thickness is coming in. It's saying 155 thousandths, which I'm having a hard time believing. I'm not sure that this is accurate. No, okay, one 155 thousandths or so, so on the thicker side. Okay, have we got everything there? Yeah, meat and potatoes time. This is a good looking knife. It's certainly not a profile that we've never seen before. I find myself saying that a lot, but the, you know, there's only so many profiles that you can do when it comes to a knife. This has a very traditional knife shaped handle and it's definitely got an American Tanto blade with a little bit of zazz, right? The flat kind of lets this tip over just a little bit before it gets to the secondary Tanto edge. Um, also up here, the old one, I remember the old Viper having these little holes right here just giving it a little bit of character. But then curiously on top, there was no jimping. Now they've got jimping that extends all the way out to here. So I kind of like the little, it almost looks like it's serrated. It's not, it's just, you know, it's just decorative thing, right? Um, but the jimping is actually there now, which is really cool. The ergonomics on this knife are spectacular. And that has to do with the edges being um, chamfered down and also the pocket clip being essentially a perfect pocket clip. Uh, off grid is one of those companies that doesn't need a gigantic diving board attached to your knife in order to make you feel like it's secured in your pocket. I don't think any knife really needs that. I think the Benchmade bug out, even though it's smaller, proved that a small pocket clip will do just fine. Off grid's pocket clip is essentially perfect. It is nested into the G10. It's got three screws, but that's not a big deal. The screws themselves are recessed. And then the clip is deep carry, which drops and has a slight swoop, a slight bill right here. That's fantastic. That's all it needs to be. This carries perfectly in and out of the pocket, even with it resting on top of the texturing. It's really not that aggressive. So it slides in and out of the pocket with ease. And guess what? They opted for a filler tab, which looks fine. This this is fine. I'm sure that we're going to still have a couple of people who are like, I don't want to look at the filler tab. But it, like it, the pocket clip can be flipped over to the other side. So lefties, even though this is a right-handed liner lock, can easily manipulate and carry it. This is great. I love this. This also comes in a few different colors, by the way. This one's black. It also comes in like all black. And then there's like a tan and gray one. I think maybe one more. Um, you can use the links down in the description to see all the different variants. Um, but the filler tab to me looks fine. It already has kind of a tactical looking, right? The, the addition of a filler tab doesn't really take away or add anything to the aesthetics. It's just there as so that the, you know, left-handed people have a mounting position and so that it can be fully recessed into the frame. I think that's great. They cater to left-handed people, even though we're using a right-handed liner lock. I think that's fine. Lefties will probably not have a problem with that. In fact, you can see here, this is plenty easy to manipulate with your left hand. I'm right hand dominant, right? So no issues there. This is a Tanto. So we have a very strong blade shape, especially considering we are looking at 155 thousandths uh, for the uh, stock of steel here. Uh, 154 cm is very well rounded. It has good toughness to begin with. Um, so adding, um, you know, a, a fairly thick blade stock and very robust geometry is only going to make that blade tougher. Um, you do have two separate edges to sharpen. That's the downside of a Tanto. Um, but it will cut, it will slice. It's not the thinnest behind the edge, but the factory edge is plenty sharp and it'll do the trick. And it's 154 cm, so touching it up and stropping it up is going to be no problem. This is their tumbled finish, which I think looks fantastic. We have the Off Grid Knives logo right here. And on the other side, it says 154 cm and Crucible because that's where the steel comes from. So that's really cool. I don't think there's really a whole lot more to say about the blade. I really like the continuous diamond texture pattern. I think that looks great. And it's, you know, it looks awesome, whether it's titanium or G10 or aluminum, it just looks good and offers meaningful traction. The ergonomics and the lock-in on this knife are great. This, this honestly feels like a, just a good, solid, robust pocket knife. 
Just something you can put in your pocket that you know is not going to break or fail you unless you're doing something stupid with it, right? Use the right tool. If it if you need a hammer, use a hammer. If you need a screwdriver, use a screwdriver. If you need a pry bar, use a pry bar. I don't care what your grandpa said, right? A knife is a knife. It's not any of those other things. It's a knife. So use the right tool. But in a pinch, if you have nothing else, this is the type of knife that I wouldn't feel too bad about just going ahead and using if you had to do, you know, something a little bit outside of the knife parameters of knifedom or whatever. Um, but yeah, no, it's a, it's a tough pocket knife. It's going to be able to handle at, at the very least continuous heavy cutting over a long period of time. And it's going to be comfortable. Uh, you, you're going to be comfortable while you're doing that. It fills the hand, whether you're wearing gloves or not, just feels good. Um, there, it, we've just got pillar construction back here, which is fine. That's really all you need. There is no lanyard hole because who cares, honestly, but sorry, lanyard people, there's no lanyard hole. That's just the way that he, that he did it. Um, we already talked about the clip. We have a stop pin located in its traditional position. And by the way, this does run on bearings. I feel like that was probably, you know, you could probably tell, right? This thing is just like, just so close to wanting to drop shut completely. I mean, it's just right there. Um, and I've been flipping this over and over again. But anyways, we have a stop pin located back here. No shouldering, but that's fine. You don't need it. No blade play up, down, left, or right. I'm going to give it a good hard flip so we can take a look at the lockup which is, I'm, I'm going to call that like 40%, something like that. Very good geometry. No hint of slippage or anything like that. No lock stick, no double clutch, no pivot lash. Extremely smooth in here. And then the detent, that's about as perfect as you could hope for. I know it's more, it sounds more like a thud than a click, but the strength of it is good. The centering, is this one? No, I think that looks, let's see if we can use the, can we use the standoff to line it up? That looks perfectly centered to me. Okay. Taiwan manufacturing. Well, I don't care about blah, 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 blah. But listen, you can, that's fine. But it costs more money. Like if you were to make this exact same knife in China, it would cost less money to produce in China than Taiwan. However you look at it, Taiwan manufacturing costs more money. It's more expensive to do. So it's, Honestly, pretty impressive, especially considering inf inflation is occurring and we're still using the same materials like as far as like what um, off-grid knives likes to use. It is the same materials, arguably better quality, right? And we're still coming in in that same price point. This is about 97 bucks. Not quite a budget knife, but this doesn't feel like a budget knife. This feels like a step up. It feels very solidly, you know, um, what's the right word? Um... It feels very justified at $97. This feels like a $100 knife. It's very satisfying when everything comes together and the execution is that. I've handled knives that were $100, $120 that didn't feel nearly as nice as this. This is yet again, this is another example over years of off-grid knives making something that looks cool and caters to that kind of almost like military kind of tactical you know, crap. But at the same time, they're making functional knives. They don't go so far into the tactical that you're sacrificing ergonomics or you're sacrificing ease of manipulation or you're sacrificing, you know, just the general execution of things. No, there's nothing unnecessary here. We've got a good functional knife with a, you know, it's an aggressive blade shape, but it is a functional and strong geometry. And I think 154 CM works really, really well as kind of a more robust hand. So, um, I, I just really like this. It's nice to see them continuing to make solid tools. That's what this is. It feels like a tool. It feels like a high quality tool. Um, and, I, you know, I have no doubt that if you pick this up, it's going to serve you well for a very long time. If you're ready to venture beyond my classification of budget knife, which is about $75, but you're not quite ready to venture up into that premium tier of $150 or $200 plus, it's kind of, this is a weird area to navigate because you're not really sure if you're getting your money's worth. And to me, honestly, it's really hard for me sometimes to pinpoint, yes, this is a good value at between, you know, $80 and $150. This is a weird territory. Off-Grid Knives does a great job of giving you a product that feels like it actually belongs in that territory. Um, you, if, if this isn't for you, I would, I would suggest that you go check out the other knives in their line. Not all of them are made in Taiwan. They do, I think, still have some knives that are manufactured in China, which is fine, right? It just depends on how you feel about that stuff. Um, but, uh, there's certainly, you know, 
ultra high quality and they utilize really, really great OEMs like Bestec, I think. Uh, sometimes we or they have at least in the past. Um, but yeah, this is solid. At $97, this is very recommendable. And it's it's pretty rare that I'm this excited about a knife that hovers right around 100 bucks because it's just so difficult for me to go, yeah, this absolutely feels like it belongs here, right? A lot of times it's a knife that should be a budget knife, but they, they're just overcharging for it. No, this definitely feels better than what I expect at the 75 or below point. Um, and, and, you know, right around 100 bucks. I mean, it just, I think they nailed it. I think this is really great. It's going to go in my most recommended knives playlist. That's going to be pretty much it today. This is likely a knife that I'll end up giving away uh, during a live stream. So if you needed an incentive to subscribe, I do uh, live events almost every weekend, either Friday or Saturday in the evenings, and I usually give away knives. So expect to see this one um, upcoming. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.